Hey guys, welcome back to Project E. Man, I'm super excited today because I'm going to show you something. Yeah, we're here on a private lake, but this is going to be something that's going to help you in a lot of areas, not just private lakes, but man, I've had a lot of bodies of water where, man, I wish I had contour lines. I wish I knew the map. I wish I knew how it laid out. So today I'm going to show you how we can go into our units and we, I'm going to show you in Navionics and I'm going to show you with the Genesis Live how to map your local body of water. It may be a big flat in the back of a, a, of a big major lake or it may be a private lake like this, but I'm going to show you how to map it. So let's go. Come on. All right, so here we are on this lake. When you look at this lake right here, there's no contour lines on it at all. And man, that kind of stinks because as fishermen, you know, we want to get out off the bank. We want to see if there's a shallow hump out there. Safety, there's lots of reasons that you want to have some contour lines. You know, I know for me in some of my tournaments that I've had, you know, I'll go to a lake and I'll get a few bites in the back of a big bay and I was like, man, I cannot figure out how this creek lays in here, or I cannot figure out how this drain lays. And this is a tool that you can use to help you understand your body of water. It just will help you so much on your body of water. So you're gonna map it. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a trail on there, okay? So I'm gonna go right here, I'm gonna hit waypoints, trails, new trail, and just get a trail started. So that trail's black. So that's gonna show me where my boat's driving. The next thing I'm gonna do that's, that, that, that to get the mapping to start, I'm gonna hit menu, overlay, and right here it says Genesis Live. I hit that button right there, and now it's gonna start mapping. You're gonna see right there, I've already mapped just a little bit of the lake before we started filming. Uh, when I go to Genesis Live options, I've got transparency, I've got control interval, I've got high, medium, and low. Really important here. Low is two foot contours. Medium is one foot. And for those super flat places, high is six inches. So you can get super, super detailed on this Lawrence map by doing this. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna just idle around this lake and I'm gonna map it. It's gonna be only off your 2D sonar. Keep that in mind. You know, your sonar cone, the deeper you are, the wider it is but it's not looking out there to the side. You know, it's, it's not, you know, I may be over here looking side to side 120 feet. It's not capturing a depth out there to the side. The other thing about it that's super cool, I can do this up to 20 miles an hour. So it's not like you gotta be just putting along the whole time. You can do this going really, really fast. I'm gonna zoom in right here and just, you can see it. It's just all the time gathering information. Another key, key, critical component when you guys go to do this. You have to have a card in your units. You know, so this right now is saving all to a card, less than 32 gigabytes. Don't go put in a 64 or 128 or 256, whatever it is. It has to be less than 32 gigabytes, you know, and, and it has to have obviously space on it. And it can't be a Navionics card. I've tried to do this before. You know, I've got Navionics cards over here on this unit. It can't be a Navionics card, so uh, keep that in mind also. Just get you a card at Walmart, less than 32 gigs, stick that thing in there. I'm going to drive around here and I'm going to idle some of this. It's so cool. I'm learning the lake right here. You can see it right before my eyes, these contours. And the more that I go over this lake, the more detailed it's going to be. You know, So I may go around it this way, then kind of cross it up a little bit. But the more you go over it, the more detailed it'll be, the, the better your lake's gonna be when you go to do this. Something else super cool about it, you know, this is all going on this card. So you can save it to that card, you can copy it to another card, you can share it with your buddy. You know, you go to fish in your team partner's boat the next weekend, you know, take your card out of your unit and go put it in his and then you're good to go. You got that, that map of the back of that bay, you know, for me, like, like if I was to relate it to some of the tournament lakes that I fish, let's take the back end of Honey Creek. Man, that sucker's flat as a pancake. The mapping back there is not just phenomenal. It's a place that you can go make this better. Sam Rayburn I can think of, you know, out in that black forest, some of that mapping is not great. 
a lot of places on Toledo Bend, the mapping is not great because of the timber. So you can take this, go do it yourself. Go do it in your favorite fishing location and make it a better, make it better. You'll just, you're gonna learn more and more about it. I just come up on a big time hump right there. I didn't realize that was there. Almost looks like a pond dam. I would bet that's a pond dam. But see, it's mapping it for me, which is so cool. I'm gonna know this lake really good. I kind of find that if you make a lap all the way around the outside of the lake and then just start going back and forth, back and forth, that's the best way to get it the most accurate you can possibly get it. Brush pile. Let's just put that on our little map. Little tree symbol for a brush pile. Man, this is so cool. I just, now I wanna know how to fish this lake. You know, it's, you know you'd think you'd just go straight down this bank. This is actually a pretty good flat right here that comes out. So now I need to know when I fish this to come out here, you know, let's say if I'm catching them in that 12 to 14 foot water. Okay, you can see we've made one complete lap around this lake. You can see right here, I've got one complete lap. When I zoom out, now I'm gonna start going back and forth just as a grid and try to get the details, get it all finalized in there, you know, fill it in. And the more times that I go back and forth on this thing, the more accurate it's gonna be. You know, you might go back and forth this way a couple times and then this way. And you know, one other thing I failed to mention, this is a killer deal on rivers. You know, the Red River, Silton Inn, Mississippi River, those places that change on you all the time, turn this thing on when you idle all the way back into a spot, you know, and then idle back out a different way with it on. Now you're building a map of, of your river and you'll find a deeper channel to make it easier for you to get back in there. Okay, so I've, I've got it filled completely in, and now I'm gonna start just dissecting. I'm gonna just go straight back and forth, and I'm gonna make a grid. And that's why I've got these contour lines on here. You can see I've marked a bunch of brush piles all the way around this thing, that's kind of cool. So now I'm just gonna start covering it back and forth, back and forth. I'm gonna cover this just a little bit faster, because again, guys, this is just working off my 2D sonar. It's not working on side imaging, so that's why I need to cover it as good as possible. You know, I know it's, it's painting a picture wider than my sonar, but remember, it, it's just working basically below your boat. The deeper it is, the wider that cone may be. You know, so th this is 30 feet deep, and not that there's gonna be something hidden out here, but there might be. So you gotta figure, my cone in 30 feet is 10 foot wide at the bottom, so Basically, you know, I got five foot to this side, five foot to that side. It's okay if we skip a little bit, but keep that in mind. If you're wanting to make your map super, super detailed, back and forth as much as possible, it's gonna make it that much more detailed. All right, we're gonna fast forward it here a little bit, guys. You'll see at the end of this, you know, what this looks like. And then I'm gonna turn right back around and I'm gonna show you how to do this with Navionics because Navionics is super cool too. Uh, they've got some great maps, but still there's some things that you can do a little bit different on Navionics and I'm going to show that to you as soon as I get this done on my Genesis Live. You can see it's really starting to fill in now. Really, really starting to, by making that one cut across there, you can see that whole cove, how the lines go in. I'm right on my same line here, so I need to scoot over just a little bit. I'm so excited I found that little hump right there in the middle of this pocket. Right here, you can see it went to 33. I lost contact with the bottom for a split second. So I'm gonna go back over and remap that. I'm like, man, I know it's not 33 feet right there. You know, I was going too fast, something, you know, I lost contact because my, my screen jumped over here, my 2D jump. So I don't want to have a mistake on my map. So I'm just going to go back over that really good right there to kind of erase or make sure that I, I correct where I lost uh, bottom contact. You can see right here how it's filling in. You know, I'm getting close back over here to where I was and you can see it all the time. It's making little adjustments 
to, to the map that it's already built, which is really, really cool. You know, this is super cool, but don't think you have to have a bass boat to go map your lake or your pond. You don't at all. You know, this information, this Genesis Live, is in the Lawrence TI family of units. You know, those are a lot less expensive units, the TI, the TI2, you know, any of the uh, HDS units, Gen 3 or newer, or even the, uh, the, the hook reveals. You know, you can do this with a hook reveal five inch screen, put it on your kayak, go out and map your favorite body of water, your pond, your creek, your lake, whatever it is. You know, you don't have to have a bass boat. You can also do this on your kayak and that's a game changer when you're on your kayak. I am really, really, really close to being done. When you look at this screen, you know, yes. Could I go back and forth over it and make it that much better? Yes, I'm going to, just because I want to, because I plan on coming back and fishing this lake someday. But you know, like right here, you know, I feel like my map's just a little bit off. You know, it's, it's, it's not deep down the center of this ditch. So I'm gonna idle right in the middle of this ditch right here, just to, to clean that map up. And you can see right there, it's just, it's moving that four foot and that five foot contour lines in to make this better. But I am really close to being done. Cleaning it up. I'm just going into the back of each one of these little cuts. It just really, really helps my map out a lot. So one other thing that I like to do is I like to, to, to make a permanent map of some of this stuff, you know. Um, where I can download it on a card. And one way to do that, uh, you know, this here, the Genesis Live is great, but it's live. It's all what's happening that day on the water. Uh, let's say I want to save it all and, and, you know, for whenever the water levels change, I still want this map. So I need to go in there as I'm making my map, hit my power button, go right here to log sonar. Now I'm logging all this sonar on this blank card as I'm making this map. The advantage of that is now I can go to genesismaps.com, I can upload that, and I have a Genesis, uh, uh, an account. Uh, I've just set one up, doesn't cost anything. Uh, I'll keep my map private. If I don't and I upload it, no big deal. It's just gonna be a, a social map. You know, anybody would able to be able to get it. Not that they could get in here on this private lake, but if you're doing it on a, on, a, on a public body of water, obviously anybody would be able to see it. But it's just one other way to use this tool to, uh, to uh, make your maps better, to save them over time, you know, no matter what the water levels do. Uh, and then when I get done, I hit that power button, stop logging. Now I've got that file right here in my unit. I can take it to my computer, upload it onto that genesismaps.com and then I can download it anytime I need it. I just noticed something. I gotta be super careful. When I go to throw that in reverse, it loses bottom, so it uh, kind of makes a little glitch in my map. I don't, I don't wanna be throwing that in reverse and then losing, losing bottom on it. But I have about got it. I got one more little, little ditch I wanna go in up here to, 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 to get it on the map. We're just cleaning everything up. This is so cool, I just love it. Right here, you know, I've got a really long point. It's showing my map that there's not land here. So that's why I'm idling in here really close to get this two foot contour line built. Super steep, so it thinks this is water all the way across here where I couldn't idle across it. Now it's gonna be accurate because I'm building, and building this two foot contour into my map. So now it's gonna show this whole point and how steep that drop is. So when I look at this, you know, I get a lot of detail when I go in close. Like I, I got that detail to all fill in around that point. You know, I've got a, a ditch right there that, you know, I could idle in a little bit more. I could idle over this point to get that point right there painted in. Right now it's kind of, kind of washed out. But uh, you know, the more you go over it, the more accurate it's gonna be. And I'm gonna go right in here and I'm gonna idle into that pocket, just clean that up a little bit. But then once I'm done with that, I am going to show you how to do it with the Navionics. You know, on a lake like this, you know, we, we did a Google Earth video on lakes that really go up and down. 
Um, you can check that out, but this lake doesn't go up and down and I didn't have a map of it. So we mapped this, I feel like really, really good. After doing this once, something I would, a mistake I made, my first initial pass that I could recommend you guys to do, make it shallow. Make it as shallow as you can, tilt, tilt your motor up. Um, that really cleans that outside lake edge up because it doesn't know if that's, you know, if you stay in seven, eight foot the whole time, it doesn't know, you know, they think that's a ridge and it gets deeper off the other side. They don't, the, 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 the unit doesn't know. So make that first lap as shallow as you can, less than five foot, and then just fill everything in. The more you fill it in, the better it's gonna be. Uh, you know, if I just zoom out right here, let's just put the old power poles down and then we'll zoom, let's make this full screen. Exit. Man, there it is. You know, you can see I marked some brush piles on it. Um, really cool points. You can see a point sticking out there. Uh, this really kind of stuck out to me, that little flat right there that comes out, you know, because this bank is super steep. You can't really tell that that's there. But uh, so there you have it. There was Lowrance, you know, how you do the Genesis Live. Now I'm going to show you how to do it with Navionics, you know, another great tool. Navionics cards, you know, they've got a lot of, a lot, a little bit of different information. I run both maps, you know, I run my Contour Plus. Uh, um, that's something I didn't mention. You know, to do this, you do not have to ever buy a card on the Contour Plus side of things. You don't have to have that card. You just stick your own card in there. But now with Navionics, you do need to have the Navionics Plus card, a great card that gives you a lot of information. I, I was about to say, that I run both, you know, I compare all maps. I still buy paper maps, guys. That's a great tip or a point. If you're fishing lakes or you're doing this for lakes, you know, some paper maps have roads, foundations, just have stuff that maybe the Navionics or the, the Lowrance map missed. It's, it's the more information I can gather as an angler, the better off I am. But here we are. I've got the, the, the Navionics pulled up. I've got a Navionics Plus card in there and I have a current subscription. You gotta have a current subscription. So I am gonna hit menu. I've got uh, sonar chart live is what I wanna hit right there. Now this is gonna start recording right on to that Navionics card, which is super cool guys, super, super cool. The options on it, a little bit different. You can change minimum depth to whatever minimum depth you want it to be. Um, let's just say three foot. It's just a cool map and I can, it adds color to it. You know, there's just some neat advantages with the Navionics that adds to it. And again, this is something you guys can do in the backs of those big flat bays in a lot of our lakes that have silted in over the years. That's where this shines. You know, it's, there's still a drain, a ditch, something out there that you, that you need to find. So just keep that in mind, ponds, lakes, you know, uh, this works great with this, but that's how you do it with Navionics. It's super simple. Turn that sonar chart live on that I just showed you. And here we are, we're mapping the lake on the Navionics card. I'm gonna put my minimum depth, looking at that, let's put it at five. So if I go down through here, less than five, it should paint that thing red. Yep. So I just missed a portion right there. And then that way, I'm gonna be able to see the outline of this lake really, really well. We'll just build it all in. I'm gonna do this a little faster than we did the last time. Let's change that minimum to something that's a little safer that I don't hit my motor on bottom. Again, up to 20 miles an hour. I'm going 10 miles an hour right here. But you can go at this speed with either one of them. That's just kind of a cool feature. You know, if you've got a big body of water, you need to try to map. So guys, there it is, man. That's how you get to know your body of water as best as possible, whether it's a private lake, a pond out with your kayak, or maybe a big body of water, you know, Lake of the Ozarks, Rayburn, Grand, you know, something that's silted in over the years. The back of those bays that don't necessarily get mapped or those timber filled areas, go into your units. Sonar Chart Live if you're using Navionics. Genesis Live if you're using just Lowrance. 
I've put a couple key points in there. You know, you've got to have a smaller than 32 gig card for the Genesis Live. You've got to have an updated card, Navionics Plus, and a current subscription if you're using Navionics. But uh, get your lake map, dude. Having contour maps is a game changer on any body of water. If it's a, if it's a pond, a private lake, it doesn't matter. Get your lake map. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Got any questions, comment below. I'll get back and I'll answer them for you.